Пропустите меня в небеса. Пропустите, ради бога. Спешишь, бабочка. Спешишь, бабочка. Он не живой. Да. Товарищ начальник, товарищ начальник, идите сюда. Смотрите, что здесь случилось. Спокойно, тихо, садитесь. Да. Личная задача товарища инспектора Пушкина. Соков. Очень приятно. Почему не отходил с другими? You'll be staying in the Holland Park. The cultural delegation has a vacant room. Good. You have been to London before? Oh, yes. And you know it's not a clean city. Thank you. Let's go. We must catch the bus. Is your name Derek Algernon Godfrey Willis? Something like that, Chief. I'm arresting you for impersonating a police officer. You got a problem, Gov. What's that? Sort of a charker. Mm. Describe it to me, Willis. Put our names down one bit, and uh, cases worked on and collars on the other. Yeah, collars, collars, yeah. When was your last arrest, Willis? Oh, give us a break, Gov. You've had us up to here. We're bumped for late. Yeah, well, we had a lot of catching up to do. Time was. Time has passed, Willis. Time has passed. Water under the bridge. Your team needs results, mate. Now, Dave Singer's down at the Bailey at the moment, and with a bit of luck, he's going to send four right naughty ones down the steps for a lagging. Plus, his team has got 11 bodies in the slammer, and none the less than for armed robbery. Nag, nag, nag. For God's sake, Chief, nobody wants out on the streets more than me. Yeah, well, don't get your priorities all in a twist, my old son. I've got a meet on the 11th floor on Monday, and all the ACC's interested in is results. Oh, uh, somebody phone for you, Governor. What was it? Anderson and French. Couple of snouts, is it? No. My tailors. Right then, where's my handcuffs? Mr. Dugdale? Over here. Ficus. I beg your pardon? Ficus Benjamina. Grows very high, you know, right up there. Oh, that's pretty high. Yeah. Is that the airport stuff you've got there? Airports and cross channel ports, yes. Good. All right. Far away. Olyanev VI, Heathrow per Aeroflot, Leningrad. Shilenkov BA, Ditto, also Laputov YD and Leonov, all with the trade delegation. Then two at Dover, both with valid visas, escorted by SB to their flats in Highgate. That's Nikolsky and Sherburin, back from leave. That all? Well, not much traffic. Moscow Aeroflot brought its usual quota, oh, including a shop steward from Birmingham. Oh, what was she doing in Moscow? Who knows? But the other people are sending a note from their Moscow office, so should shed some light. Oh, good. Right. <clears throat> Something's happening. Yep. Well, it's this chap, Orlov Andrei Vasilievich, minor functionary with a cultural delegation, over here to help with Koryanko's violin recital at the Queen Mary Hall. Um, 
Well, this is this morning's photo taken from Heathrow Special Branch. It's just it's not quite the same as the other two we have on file. This one taken in Ottawa during the Bourchard visit. Mm. And these taken in Paris during International Youth Orchestra Week. So, uh, what's the problem? Hair. He's got more hair and it's not so grey. standing by the Spitfire. That's a hurricane. Oh. What age were you? Hmm? Eighteen. Oh. Have you never heard of Greece in 2000? In Moscow? Well, why not? Vanity knows no frontiers. Thank you. Unless you'd like me to take a team off the new GRU man at Highgate. No. Half the office is off with flu. You know, I think you suit it that colour. <laughs> well, let's leave that stuff to the um, to the chicken, shall we? <laughs> Come on. The place is full of ambitious bachelors and officers with broken marriages. Well, my marriage is still going strong. Good meeting, George. Yeah. Thanks for that bit about the importance of each man and every beat. Did you read that somewhere? Reading? Let me have about me police officers who stick to their beanos. Where's DS Willis? I nipped out to arrest somebody, I expect. Huh. About bloody time. Have a word, George. Yeah. George, one or two things I've been asked to mention to you. Yeah. Well, uh, it's the senior officer's dining room. Well, now you're a chief inspector, you're quite welcome to use it, of course. But, uh... Oh, Christ, this is ridiculous. Um, you see, the assistant commissioner's table is... Well, you just don't plonk yourself down by the AC when he's with two chief constables. Slap him on the back and say, Hello, sleuth, how's tricks? Bernard's always been called sleuth. He was DI and CS, we all called him sleuth. George, George. He is an assistant commissioner. Yeah, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. He was with two chief constables and I barged in both feet. He might be wanting to talk shop. Mayor culpa, mayor culpa. In future, I won't be so uh, gauche. Well, just a friendly word of advice. The acoustics? Well, of course they're important. Oh, don't you think so? Oh, yes, of course, of course I do. Acoustics, yes. Very important. I should say so. I mean, Karayenko is fairly picky. I'm sorry. I'm afraid that is the word for it. He was world famous violinist ago. Do you know, he actually insists on playing certain passages at rehearsals. Well, I mean to say, who ever heard of such a thing? Uh, what sort of microphones? Ah, microphones, yes. We shall cover him with three a C28 and stand oh. and two suspended D24s. Old fashioned, I'm afraid, but uh, tried and true. <laughs> Good. You're being very helpful. Excuse me. Yuri! Yes, Andrei Vasilievich? I want to buy some musical equipment. There is a place near Victoria. Can you lend me the consulate car? Out of the question. Mm, then I take the metro. Are these items necessary for the concert? Vital. Very well. Don't get lost. And Andrei Vasilievich? Yes, Yuri? No women, no black market, and no currency deals. The English go to great lengths to attempt to compromise us. Rest assured, comrade. Have I not been abroad many times before? Three hours. Don't worry. What's Willis up to? He's out filling collars at long last. Just as well. You've been a bit hard on him of late. Since my promotion? Aye. Anyway. Claire and I are having a few folk round to dinner. Do you fancy coming? Bring a lady, Saturday, eight. That's real handsome of you, Jack. How's the job going? Not getting you down? Well, I feel like a bleeding fish out of water. All these committees, complaints, investigations, drinks with visiting firemen. I hate it. Me too. I feel like a bloody insurance executive. We're getting old, Jack. 
They laugh uproariously in youth, and when they got to feeling old, they up and shot themselves, I'm told. I'll do the quotes. You come a Saturday? Yeah, sure. Fancy a quick one down the boozer? Huh? What happened to the senior officer's dining room? Nah, sod it. That's what it's about. I don't know. What Get out. It's a big mistake. As you're out of order. Do you know it? But why are you running me in like this? Get to the bleeding motor, you punts. Tom, ring my old lady. Tell her I'll get me a brief. Get on. Look, you're out of order, Mr. Willis. Listen, your Mr. Foreman's going to go mad. Get in. I'm trying to do your favour on Yeah, very proud. How's the night school going, George? Uh, it's not night school. It's uh, open university, actually. <laughs> Oh, pressing on, you know, persevering. Passed any exams yet? Yeah. Well, I sat to a few weeks ago. Uh, English lit up to 1814, political history of Europe, from the war, the Austrian succession, up to 1920. Why 1920? The founding of the Nazi party. It was also the year Kilmarnock beat Albion Robbers for the cup. 3-2. Reckon there's a connection? Could be. Oh, uh, Jack, I've got to pop in the home office for a chat, lesson, some warrants that we need, so uh, thanks for the drink. Don't forget Saturday. I won't come. Excuse, please. Yeah? What is the money for this? 12p. You got troubles. Troubles? Problems. Oh, no, no. No, no problems. Thank you. Durak. Idiot. Ah, oh, just, just a minute. Now, I've been watching you. More to the point, you've been taking a very keen interest in me and my colleague. I clocked you when we came out of Scotland Yard. You were buying a newspaper over there at the tube station. And later in the pub, uh, you were watching us again, but trying not to make it obvious. Then you followed us out of the pub and down the road. That's when I detached myself to take a better look at you. And when my colleague bought a newspaper, you bought another one. I mean, you must have read the noon edition six times in the rubber dub. Now then, Sunshine, what is your bleeding game? You're a detective? Well, uh, I might be. I've been a bloody fool. What did they think I was doing? Well, uh, best tell all, eh? Best tell all, of course, but if I tell you all, you're in for a big bloody surprise. So, bloody surprise me then. Come on, over a drink. Of course. I'm back. What sort of a detective are you? What department? CID, New Scotland Yard. CID. What rank? Why should I tell you? Detective Chief Inspector. Good. Now look, maybe I can save something from that act of stupidity. And I never believed in this male menopause. Now you've lost me completely, Spock. Uh, what will you have? Vodka. Uh, Janice, a vodka, a gold watch, and half Nigerian lager, please. Uh, in different glasses. Hanging around Scotland Yard. Me. I mean with the Soviet cultural delegation. And all because of a crazy bat in my hat. Uh, no, it's a bee, bonnet, or bat, belfry. <laughs> <laughs> English idiom. In the Russian, cockroach on the brain. Is it really? Hmm. Look, what is all this about? You must have heard of Moscow subway murders. Seven murders in four years. No, oh, can't say I have. No? Then I will instruct you. Uh, look, uh, I don't think that Moscow quite comes within my brief, sport. Mm. 
Gorać. Ładna pogoda, bo to. Tak. So, the sixth victim was a girl ballet dancer. Yes, and always the same murder weapon, a meat skewer. A meat skewer? Through the neck. There's only witnesses. Never one who sees the attack. Oh. Indeed, yeah. I've analyzed each case, looking for things, <laughs> circumstances, people which crop up in each case. Mm. Yeah, common denominators. That is a good expression. Yeah. Common denominators. Is it a Scotland Yard expression? Yeah, they teach it to us at the detective training school, you know, along with um, how to take plaster casts of obnail boots and how to take <laughs> bits of hair off combs and put them in, in plastic bags and, you know, all... <laughs> Not much <laughs> help, eh? No, no. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, dos... Uh, dos darovie. Dos darovie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no, it's not much help, but... Uh, Two men. Yeah? What? Two men cropped up in the four years of inquiry, yeah. either as witnesses or near the scene, or reported by other witnesses. Yeah. One's name is Koruenko. He's a violinist, quite famous. He's now here in Queen Mary Hall. Okay. And the other? Oh, a minor official trade department. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, now, are these victims, is, is there any uh, common denominator? Uh, yeah, yeah, apart from uh, the final one. I cannot see one. A black man, now this is going backwards chronologically. A ballet dancer, a sailor, a flower seller, a rabbi, a waitress, and a butcher's apprentice. Yeah, sounds like the bleeding cast of Iolanthe. I beg your pardon? Uh, like the, the cast of an opera, or one of those endless novels by Dostoevsky. You know Dostoevsky? Yeah, yeah, I, I read quite a lot of his works uh, for my studies, you know, uh, along with Marx and Engels. Very impressive. Mm. No wonder Scotland Yard is world famous. Ah. And also a good suggestion. Yeah. I will consult the lists of all characters in all Russian operas, ballets and uh, novels. Now I must go back to work. Mm. I hope we shall meet again, Mr... Uh, uh, Reagan, uh, Ronald Reagan. Yes, <laughs> I know it's exactly the same as the American president, yeah. Your colleagues must josh you, old man, huh? Uh, yes, they do quite a bit. Uh, where did you learn your English? Well, I taught myself yeah. night classes. Also, I read decadent Western novels. Yeah? Carry on, Jeeves, no? Oh, <laughs> night school. Good for you. Now, at our next meeting, I'll give you more details. Your help will be much appreciated. <coughs> well, look, uh, don't get this wrong, Sport, but I'd rather that our particular friendship didn't uh, blossom. Because I'm a foreigner? No, because you're Russian. See, it causes difficulties for a simple Rosa like me. All right? Dash it all. <laughs> I understand. So, many thanks, Sport. Oh. Ah, I learned <laughs> that from you. Yeah. Sport is good, though. No? Yeah, it's good, darling. <laughs> Goodbye. Mm. Oh dear, why do we get all the bleeding nutters? Ah, Janice, vodka. See him anywhere. Hola? Hmm. You needed some equipment for the performance, no? <laughs> well, if I did, I certainly wouldn't say to him. Damn Orlov. I knew he was going for a woman. Really? He just doesn't fit in at all, does he? This is going to be wild, isn't it? What? Lifting every villain in sight. Ah, oh, yes. Well, a rush of blood to the head. If he goes on like this, we'll all be out of a job by Christmas. <laughs> I've just been accosted by a ruddy nutter. A nutter, Chief? Yeah, Rusky. The actual Russian nutter. Over here on some sort of fiddle. What con man, George? A violin-type fiddle at Queen Mary Hall. He plays the fiddle, Gov. Yeah, he's a cultural delegate, whatever that means. Bit of a gopher, I suspect. <laughs> He was 
rabbit in on about some series of murders in the Moscow Metro? Wanted the opinion of a yard man. You sort of bump into him, did he? No, he was just hanging around. Ah. Oh. You've been out and about, have you? Seven collars, Gun. In four hours. That brings up the chart stakes, what? I knew you had it in you, Derek. All written up, too. I'm very impressed. Targa, if I hurry, I can just... Willis! Yes, Gun. This McKnight, RM. Conspiracy to fraud, false pretenses and, and bigamy. That's not uh, Moose... Moose McKnight. McKnight. From the Cinderella Club, yes, Gun. God almighty, Willis. You can't nick him. <laughs> it's done, Chief. What, Nick? Fine street slammer. You know what you've only gone and done, don't you? Snout. My best. Oh, Christ, I'm sorry, George, but you never said. That little canary must have fixed up about a thousand years of porridge for his big mouth punters. I'm mortified. <laughs> Old lady these days, Gordon. She all right, she? Uh, not too bad, George. Hey, she's not still doing those psychology classes, is she? Yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks, mate. I'll have it on. Okay. Well, 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 miss. What are we doing in here then? We are not in here, Mr. B. I am in here. Got put on the sheet, I hear. Too bloody right, I have. No, it is conspiracy to defraud, false pretenses and bigamy. I mean, you have been a naughty boy, my old son. <laughs> well, can't you do anything for me? Well, it's in the book, isn't it? I mean... Oh, what lets me up the steps, is it? Could be. Could be, yeah. What do you mean by could be? Well, you've got anything worth me sweating to get you bail? Bail? <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not nosing nothing for you, Mr. Borman. Pass him off the hook. Well, that's that then, isn't it? Hang about, Mr. Bay. Well, you owe me a couple of favours, don't you? Well, hmm. What exactly is the score? Well, on straight evidence, an average poison, about uh, three years, maybe more. Oh. You can bank on a pontoon. <sighs> OK. I'll give you Joe Gale. And there's a New York bloke, candy man. I'm listening. Jesus Christ, what do you... Uh, just uh, give us a couple of sex, will you? Hmm? Is he there? No, he's all right. I'm sticking my neck out for you. Map here. He's got to meet Friday with the Blacken team. The ones that did the haymarket job. Where? Suspended sentence. Yeah, sure. 4 p.m. Coffee shop, Hilton. Right then, you're on. Mr. B, don't forget. No, you're on. Meet Skewl, all right. Can't you put your kebabs on? I'm more of a takeaway curry man myself. Well, oh, thank you, Robert Carrier. We haven't got enough to take to the murder squad at this stage. Oh, no, no, no. Probably was just a coincidence. Queen Mary Hall, you say? Yeah, a uh, violin recital, uh, Soviet... Uh, Name? Uh, Korienko. He's in the Sunday Times magazine this week. Oh, no, George. The name of the nutter. All off. Not that. Just all off. Oh, Christ, George, you I sussed him something. for a nutter, Jack. OK. Hello, Bill. Jack Lambie here, D23. Do you lot get the immigration lists? Alien, Soviet, per day. For our win this way, Jack. Well, what's the problem? Uh, well... One of my young techs picked up a civvy and searched him. He claims he comes from some Russian cultural delegation. Oh, well, the computer will have it. Just plug into SB or the home office. Come on, come on, old bugger. This is me using the old boy network. But does that only work one way? Name? Orlov. Andrei Vasilyevich. Yeah, that sounds like him. Is that all? 
Um, listen, are, are there any notes or codes against his name? Mm -hmm. Well, no, no, not really. Not really? No. Well, <clears throat> is there anything else that I should know, Jack? No. No, no, Bill. Uh, thanks for the confirmation. Goodbye, boy. Thank you. And um, ask Joanna to pop in for a moment, will you please? I'll be interested to know what you call a nutter, George. Yeah, I'll catch you up. Uh, Vanessa, you know any newspaper men, uh, crime buffs, foreign? Well, I might do go. Don't I might do me, Wonder Woman, yes or no? Well, maybe I do, yes. Yeah, well, right. Uh, nip down and ask him about that, will you? Derek? Yes, Cuff. Take a run down to Putney Mortuary. They've got a stiff there, got croaked in the tube this afternoon. Gov, I'm early turn. Don't ponce about. I do not know whether it was flight or not, but each of instrument is definitely altered. It has changed. <laughs> Alexei, it sounded perfect to me. You are telling me how my violin sounds? No, Perhaps no. it's the acoustic. Good day, gentlemen. You tell me where I might find a Mr. Orloff. This is Mr. Orloff. Oh, how do you do? And you, Mr. Korienko, sir. May I say what an honor and a privilege it is to meet you, sir. My name is Bullman. Enchanted, Mr. Bullman. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Oh, I'm from the local police station, sir. We have to arrange parking facilities for your delegation while they're using the Queen Mary Hall. Just coaches and numbers and that, you know. Shouldn't take too long. You're it. Of course, Andrei Vasilievich. We always appreciate the cooperation of the British police. Thank you, sir. The thin blue line will attempt to alleviate the Damoclean menace of the double yellow. Well, if I could just show you the parking areas out here. Thank yes, you. Yes, of Thank you. <laughs> Ronald Reagan. <laughs> what? Well, as you heard in there, it's Bullman, actually. You were using an alien. An alias? Yes, an alias. I didn't see any point in telling you my proper name, Squire. But now? Now? You're in trouble, pal. Mm. You know what happened today? Yes, but he's always complaining about his violin. His violin? Yes, he's a nervous man, so he complains about his violin. Murder by Mick Skewer. On the underground, in the subway. Yes, that's what we were discussing. Well, no, today, the murder happened today at 3.23 p.m. Oh, not again. Yeah. Which station? Parsons Green. No, no, we're Prospect Mirror. Parsons Green. No, well, there is no such station in Moscow. And London. In London? Here, today. Boże mój. The meat skewer? Exactly as you described to me. Have a cigarette? Yeah, here. Yeah. No, I've stopped. Here. Thank you. Oh, still got my lighter there. There you go. I didn't think he would have the nerve. Who? Andre? There were two principal suspects, I told you. Yeah. But we only have one. For the moment. Of course. Look, I clocked you hanging around St. James Underground Station today, right? Then you display a morbid interest in a series of alleged murders on the Moscow Metro over the past four years. And in less than an hour, a city banker is found dead on the district line with a meat skewer through his neck. Look, I have made study of these murders, yes. I am on my first visit to London, yes. I came to see the famous Scotland Yard, yes. I want to see Baker Street, Sherlock Holmes. These places are obligatory to a criminologist like me. Criminologist? Amateur. Cultural work can get sometimes very boring. And Moscow subway murders, you must have contact informer with the Moscow police. None. Interpol, then. Any good journalist. The Moscow subway murders are well known all over Russia. It was only natural for me to take this interest. As a criminologist? Amateur. How did you get from St. James's Park to this building today? By metro. Metro. Subway. Well, that's an honest answer.
about Moscow? Ah, yes, the famous Moscow subway murders. I did a piece about a year ago, got spiked. Suppressed? No, 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 nobody's much interested in the Moscow crime rate. <laughs> no, but you were. Yes, well, it was... At first, it was just the odd story coming out. Uh, not from the press corps, funnily enough. Returning businessmen, tourists. Two or three people had been murdered on the Moscow Underground, the Metro. And they all went the same way. And what way was that? A meat skewer. <laughs> and uh, in the same place always, I mean, um, anatomically speaking. Yeah. Well. Thank you. Sokol, Elektrozovrodskaya, Kuzminki. There's stations on the <laughs> Moscow Underground the Metro. Can I hang on to this? I'll get you a photocopy. The killings were seemingly random. The police ran a psychological profile on the killer. And he was a psychopath. Oh, yeah. Very interesting. They reckon cultivated person, well-educated, physically strong. Possibly someone in minor authority, since no one had bothered to challenge him or her for the killings, even though it was obvious the killer was present each time. That's fascinating. Yes, yeah, the other thing that was interesting was the detective they had in the case, an oddball for a Russian. Uh, well, what sort of oddball? Did you seem cratty? Took the murders personally, ruffled a few feathers. Never got near solving them, but Moscow got to know all about him. A sort of May Gray of the Metro, name of Pushkin. Uh -huh. <laughs> And you know, if Pullman's interested in this man, then so should we be. No, we are interested. That's why I was there. Intuition, damn it. What? Well, your intuition told you that this chap all up is not 100%. Mine didn't. And what Pullman's up to? I'll have a word with his boss. I'll also check the special branch. You know, Jack Lambie has no right talking to Soviet nationals without first clearing it to them. Well, maybe he did. No, not a chance. How do you know? Intuition. You don't think he's gone to his head, do you? What? Well, promotion. Tyler. You know, I think that he spent so long fighting for it that it's a bit of an anticlimax. Like so many things in life. Oh, he's so cool. Of course, of course he's coarse. He's my oppo, isn't he? Ah, coffee. Oh, that was uh, mine, actually. Right then, fill me in. Right. The victim was a, a male Caucasian, age 54, named John Cleveland Reagan. Yeah, here's a coincidence. Oh, yes. Uh, he's a banker and he resides at 55 Upper Lane, Wimbledon. Resided. Cause of death? Pierced spinal cord by a metal object, roughly one eighth of an inch by one fortieth of an inch thick, and at least 14 inches long. Hmm. Meat skewer. Yes, a sharp meat skewer, to be precise. And uh, here is the news from Moscow. I missed the first tube. That's all right. I was a bit late myself, some chummy at the Queen Mary Hall. Is that Koryenko? How do you know about him? I read about it in the Sunday Times. Can we go? I'd like to hear him. Uh, yeah. Uh, we could take George. He's keen on Tchaikovsky and all that stuff. Would you remember to ask him about Saturday? All oh, right. George will never miss a free meal. Jack. I booked a table at that new place on Smith Street. You know what a floor stall was? Oh, good. Have a good day. So-so. There was great confusion on the underground. Apparently, somebody got himself murdered. Good evening to you. What's the score here? Jack? Can I give you two a lift? This is very nice of you. We're going to Smith Street. Tommy, take it to Smith Street. There's a good chap. On your way home, Bill? More or less. More or less. Did that gen any help to you, Jack? What gen was that? Oh. The Albert Hall chap. Queen Mary Hall. Yeah. Yeah, it cleared a few things up. So you let it drop, eh? Well, um... No, not exactly.
Madame. Oh. Okay, Mario. Madame would like to wait or to order now? No, I'll order now. Madame has learned to live with the sudden and unexplained departures of Signor. Ah, Signora is a doctor, see? He could be. He's never around long enough to ask. Is that Black Label? Yeah. Jack? I wouldn't say no to a gin and tonic. Have you got any? Oh, I've got cases of it. I've got gin, scotch, rum. You name it, I got it. I'll knock out a crate or two if you like. Four quid a bottle. Had me worried there for a minute, George. Good health, George. Listen to that. Moves up. Mm. You can't play that on the euphonium. The euphonium? Who's that playing it? Korenko. I mean, does that sound like the sort of bloke who could stick a series of meat skewers into a series of living people? Seven in Moscow, one in London. Oh, on that basis, you've eliminated him, have you? He didn't leave the hall all day. I checked, which leaves all off. Which is what, I presume, brings you here, Mr. Dugdale. Call me Bill. Yes, all off. And I'm out of down. Yeah, is that what's up? We were clocked chatting to him outside the Queen Mary Hall. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's nice to see that the public money is not entirely wasted, Mr. Dugdale. Yes, well, we were interested, my people in Comrade Orlov for a rather different reason. Mm. Thought you were going out with Mrs. Lambie tonight? Oh, yeah. She's sitting down at the second course now. If I catch her before the coffee, I might escape with a slap in the ear. Orlov may not be Orlov. May not be Orlov. Yeah, that, that figures. But you're not surprised? No. Orlov said it was his first visit to London. I checked. He'd been here twice before. Correct. Plus, I've been a bit worried about his photo this time. Doesn't quite match up with the old ones we have of him. Um, can I offer you some? Yeah? Nice clock, George. Yeah, present to my dad. King's Royal Rifle Corps. He was an RSM. What were you in, Jack? Parachute Regiment. So, uh, George, I've agreed to cool this inquiry with Bell's office. So we'd like you to press on first thing tomorrow. And if Orloff isn't Orloff, I want to know exactly who he is. Well, he could be a murderer. No. But he probably knows who the killer is. And his criminology hobby, you mean? Hobby? The bloke's probably a copper. Genuine item. Copper? Mm. Jack, look, it was no accident him showing out to you and me. Ergo, he must have a reason. And I think he was trying to alert us to his suspects. Totally unbelievable. The Soviet Union would never permit even an unofficial trip by a Moscow police officer to the UK. Oh, perhaps he did it in his own time. I mean, even, even Moscow coppers take holidays. No, 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 no. They wouldn't allow him to come. The West is too decadent and dangerous for an innocent Russian policeman. I still reckon it's Moscow job. See, he probably heard that his suspect was coming over here and he somehow managed to swing this all off trip as a cover. I reckon I know what his real name is, too. You serious? Hmm. I'll ask him. First thing tomorrow. Couldn't he take his violin out? It would look better. He says the climate is too damp. It's very mild today. Korienko is worried about his instrument being perfect for the concert. Couldn't we get him posed with a substitute from the orchestra? Wouldn't be quite the same, would it? 
There is the traffic policeman. See what he wants, Andrei. Of course. Who is this Pushkin? Well, to be frank, Squire, I believe it's you. Me, a policeman? We know you're not all off. What did you do with him, Sport? The old meat skewer? Well, I'm not the killer, believe me. I want him more than you do. You're in deep water, comrade. You could find yourself in trouble with the Soviet authorities. Not yet, but it's very close. Well, you better tell me. What is your first name? George. Mine is Ivan. Yes, I'm Ivan Ivanovich Pushkin, Inspector, Moscow Police. I must be a madman to be here in London, all for a few murders. I knew it. Is this now when the long arm of law reaches out for me? How do you become Olaf? Orl was a minor official with the Minister of Culture. He looked very much like me. This year I've been awarded three weeks vacation on the Black Star Coast. What, you, you swapped? I beg your pardon? You traded IDs. I, yes, exactly. Orlov was a small fraud criminal. I blackmailed him. And you're planning to go back to Russia and change places again? It was madness. <laughs> you crazy bloody samovar. Samovar? What in God's name possessed you? I had to. This for me is the last year in police service. And you vowed to solve the Moscow subway murders before you retire. How do you know? Scotland Yard. <laughs> for the past four years I've been assigned to the subway murders. But now it's a big joke in Moscow, for nobody ever comes close to solving them. Another case for Pushkin. This is a popular saying in Moscow. And I begin to feel stupid. And I'm not, I'm no, I'm not. Yeah, sounds all too familiar, sport. Still, you have narrowed it down to two suspects. Exactly, Korienko and Razanov. And I favored Korienko. Because of that, I took this risk. Korienko was my primary suspect. Uh, Korienko's in the clear. He was rehearsing when yesterday's victim got kebabbed. Then my theory is wrong. Will the British authorities take action against me for using Orlov's papers? Korienko was a good candidate. Still, it's got to be a Moscovite and someone recently arrived in London because the, the MOs are too similar. What was the other bloke's name again? Razanov. Well, perhaps Razanov's in the UK too. I don't know. I don't think so. You'd like me to check? Sure, if you like. Ivan. In Moscow, do you get winter footwear allowance automatically? Or do you have to indent for it? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Razanov. Pavel N. Entered UK, Heathrow, April 10th. Base trade delegation, Highgate West Hill. Occupation, accountant, banking, shipping, possible KGB association, low grade, middle ranking bureaucrat, SB observation, last time he was here 10 months ago. Well, I don't see anything there to excite us. I suppose he must have occasion to travel by underground. Ah, oh, found it. Razanov, PN. Yes, he's here for consultations with the Moscow bank office in the city. Or probably uses a trade delegation car. But there's nothing to stop him taking the tube. Well, you got a photograph of him? Oh, my dear George, we even have a photograph of you. God and his angels guard thy sacred throne, and may ye be thrice blessed. Yeah. Oh. I had a dog once. Very fine of heights he was. What happened? Happened? <laughs> Nothing really happened. He just wasn't much help when he came to hanging Christmas decorations, that's all. Oh. Is that him? Razanov? Penguin to Raccoon. Possible ID. Your suspect just left the office about four o'clock from IOP, over. Understood. Go on. Raccoon to all stations. Chummy has just left his office. Do not lose him. Ah. Days now, Chief, and this guy hasn't put a foot wrong. Yeah, waste of bleeding time, if you ask me. Well, why isn't this down to murder squad, anyway? Our Celtic governor's done a deal with the funny people. They're undermanned, but a Russian official who might be a psycho killer is just too tantalising for them to ignore completely. So we're playing nanny? Yep, we're playing nanny.
Lambie here. Suspect now proceeding west along Frogmorton Street. Orloff or, or Pushkin? Mm. <laughs> I feel quite sorry for him. Yeah, he's out of his depth. Poor little sod. I wonder what he thought he could accomplish coming over the wall like that. Going down the bank to you. Right. Off we go. Well, sport, as a player, I'd say you were guilty of a slight breach of protocol. Book him, Dano. So is it, your Soviet ski diplomat? Christ, George, a bloody meat skewer. Not quite bloody, Jack, thanks to this lady. Madam, may I? <laughs> it's fun, yeah. I told you I was detective. You knew it was Razanov all the time. Of course. But in my country, he's high party official, KGB connection. That's why to try to catch the Moscow subway killer was no joke. But here, British justice, da? Da, ah, you better believe it, sunshine. And me? I'm under arrest, I suppose. Can you pretend to be Orlov till you get home and give him his passport back? What do you think, sport? Well, you've done nothing that bothers me in this country, so... Uh... Bugger off, Ivan. I think your British police are wonderful. <laughs> Old Dugdale's not gonna like it. Old Dugdale's not gonna get it. Dosvidanya. Dosvidanya. Ah.